I'm here tonight as a representative of the Association for the Palliative Turn. The association is a kind of loose collective of artists, designers. Um, we have a kinesiologist. We have a climate scientist. We have a comedian. We have a philosopher. And we're a very loose uh, collective of people who are united in our interest in what we call palliatively curious. So I want to thank you for coming here tonight and, and choosing to spend what little time you have left on this earth with me this evening. There's certain amounts of certainty in tonight's performance and there's a, a great chunk of uncertainty. And how much time we will have together is yet to be decided. But I hope that however much time it is, you feel that it has been well spent. So a little bit about the association. The Association for the Palliative Turn, or APT, is uh, a collective of, as I've said, many different people. And we're united only in our interest in thinking against the persuasive and pervasive and hubristic idea that humans can fix all the problems that we have created and thereby escape our certain fate. We take our cues from palliative medicine, which kicks in in the moment that a patient is deemed to be no longer curable. Palliative care aims to mitigate pain, distress, and finds creative ways to ensure that however much time is left is filled with joy, pleasure, and as little suffering as possible. This is not to be confused with assisted dying. That's something in different, different entirely. And nor do we have a particular focus on death, but we merely wish to acknowledge the fact that it is going to happen and plan for it. Despite the fact that we are a diverse group of people with climate scientists, pal uh, pa palliative carers, uh, health practitioners, death doulas, our focus is in the contemporary art world. And in contemporary art, there is a particular kind of uh, focus on the curative. We expect contemporary art to be active in creating an awareness and thereby change. But if the last 50 years have taught us anything, it's that we can be entirely aware of our misgivings and our shortcomings and ignore them and carry on as we have been. Awareness is a sharply deflating cultural currency. APT, the Association for the Palliative Turn, asks if we've not been asking the wrong questions all the time. What if our attempt to control everything in our lives and death, as well as that of the planet, is just another symptom of the same problem? I think everyone knows and is pretty exhausted by the phrase that we live in interesting and challenging times. The ground is, is continually shifting beneath our feet and in fact that instability has become more or less the new normal. The palliative turn embraces that instability, that ambiguity, and it asks us to find a different way to engage with uncertainty up to and the certainty of death in order that we might live better lives. Embracing that uncertainty still leaves a lot of space for creativity, individuality, and of course, humor. As a group, we try to integrate palliative thinking and approaches in the ways that we work, live, and prepare to die. I, for example, tonight I'll, I'm wearing a pancreatic cancer. If you come and have a look closely, you'll see the slow degradation of the pancreas within my clothing. So you can live with the idea of death fashionably. The palliative turn is not about giving up or losing hope. It's about reassessing what we can hope for and being active and creative with that knowledge. And there is hope. Palliative practices have proven that with accepting that there is an end, we can in fact extend that life 
and make it a better one. So as a group of very different people, we've come together and uh, like any proper collective, we've written a manifesto. We do not all agree on what is in the manifesto, but I would like us to go through the manifesto and read it together so that you can get a full picture of what we're about. For immediate release, all together, please. A call for the palliative turn. This culture is coming to an end. This society is coming to an end. This economy is coming to an end. Your body is coming to an end. They will either transform beyond recognition or perish. Business as usual has nothing to offer anymore. Ask yourself, what are the real world effects of your work and actions? Are you just trying to appear virtuous? Do you want to be on the right side of history? Are you trying to carve a living out of your criticality? That too is business as usual. It must come to an end. Embrace instead the end of everything as we know it. Do it with generosity, kindness and humor. The art of the palliative turn follows the principles of palliative care and medicine. It acknowledges the existence of the end and plans for it. It affirms life and regards dying as a normal and necessary process. It intends to neither hasten nor postpone the end. It mitigates suffering, gives pleasure, generates joy wherever possible. It accompanies a dying person, culture, society or religion on their final stretch and shares the horrors of darkness with them. Altogether, but. It also shares intensity, beauty, and excitement. The acute awareness of life which accompanies death. It is empathetic and communicative. It is collaborative and non-hierarchical. It is multidisciplinary and multi-perspectival. The art of the palliative turn asks, How would you like to go? So I would like to ask for the house lights to be lifted now. And we're going to together do a short exercise which comes from a last aid workshop. So you'll all be familiar with first aid if somebody needs their life to be saved. But a last aid course involves preparing members of the public to accompany a dying friend relative or whoever. So if you would turn to the back page of your pamphlets, please, where you have this little dotted line. Everyone got a, everyone got a pamphlet and a pen? Yeah. Does anyone need a pen? Okay, so I would like you to draw a line. It can be a straight line, it can be a curved line. I would suggest doing a fairly regular straight line just across the page. And now on that line, make a cross where you believe your birth was. Some people put that 
at the beginning of the line. That would be the orthodox position to put it. Some people put it before the start of the line or a little after. Everyone got that? One cross for your birth. And now on that same line, put a cross for where your death will be. Most people put it at the end of the line. Some people are more comfortable with where they put it, closer. Okay, everyone done that? And now I would like you to put a cross for where you think you are now. Think carefully. So this evening is really about that space. That space that you have between now and the cross of wherever your death will be. And in order to uh, represent the different and differing members of the uh, Palliative Association, we have a uh, Wheel of Fortune. Each one of these segments represents a contribution from one of the members of APT. And they're all wonderful contributions. Some of them fad, some, some of them sad, some of them tragic, some of them deeply philosophical. But we won't have time to watch all of these performers because the evening will end in two of the following ways. If the dial should land, I will demonstrate now, on black, this is sudden death. If the dial lands on black, the evening will be over immediately. I will be very happy to welcome you to partake in some sandwiches with me afterwards, in which we can maybe share in the sadness of the evening being curtailed. And the second way that the evening will end is I would like you all to pull out your phones and set a timer for 30 minutes. So I'm going to do that too. Keep your phones on silent, but if we all do it together, everyone get, get their phones ready. Okay. And I'm going to count down from three and we'll all click together 30 minutes, okay? Three, two, one, go. So because we won't have time to see all of the segments, I just want to briefly go through and let you know what you could be missing. So number one, we have Simon Blanc, who is a photographer from Sweden, with the film The 20th Century, What a Bummer. Two, we have the initiator of uh, the Association for the Palliative Turn, Olaf Westfallen, who coined the term, the Palliative Turn. And we will hopefully also have him in a live feed coming in, doing a live drawing. At three, we have Daphna Maimann and Ethan Hayes shoot with a advert for a summer camp for adults, a way to learn how to say goodbye. At four, we have John Luke Roberts, a British comedian who had a difficult relationship with his father, which he talks about uh, in a curious way. Number five, Anna-Marie Goldschmidt is an 85-year-old kinesiologist, and she's prepared an exercise for you all to complete to help with certain transitions in life. At six, we have a exercise which involves incredible heroism and terrifying grief. At seven, we have Pleasant Journey, a project by Ethan Hayes Shoot, who has developed a company to help with the third most difficult process in life, moving house. Eight, we have Lydia Röder, who is a palliative uh, practitioner and death doula, and she will demonstrate to you, hopefully, the Körper Tambura, which is a special instrument used uh, for palliative care. 
Hopefully it doesn't land on number nine. Number nine is a quagmire of bureaucracy. We will have to do a audit of the evening. And if it does land on number nine, that will probably be the whole of the rest of the time. And then of course, sudden death. So everyone's got the concept, everyone's ready. I do hope that we do get to see something, but this is not rigged. It could land on 10 at any time. So music, please. <laughs> That's number six. We have Stand In, Stand Out. Wow, what a early appearance. It's seven, it's seven. Phew. Okay. Then I would like to introduce you to a project called Pleasant Journey by Ethan Hayes Shute. Uh, hopefully we will have a film coming up, but as that comes up, I will just read to you the, the statement that he has prepared. Pleasant Journey is perhaps, and without doubt, the world's most efficient, effective, and empathetic moving company. From home room to home base, front yard to graveyard, Pleasant Journey covers your move completely, be it with blankets and bubble wrap, or pickups and packing tape. They'll be on your side, inside, and outside. Now, live from their headquarters, we present one of their many comprehensive employee and wannabe employee training videos, expressly for your viewing enthusiasm. There seems to be an issue with the video. Um, maybe we can try and play it again, see if it... Well, in the meantime, Ethan has prepared a little bit of promotion. Well, I, obviously the video is not going to come back. So let's um, move on for the next, the next turn. Number three. Another project by Ethan Hayes Shute uh, and his partner Daphna Maimon. I'm very happy to introduce you to the film Camp So Long. Also in advertising, there's also there's a certain commercial value to all of their projects. Please enjoy. Folks, I'm here to tell you the goodbye news. I'm here to tell you about Camp So Long. Summer camp for grown-ups. Now listen closely, because I didn't camp so long. I didn't sign up. I didn't because 
I didn't. That's all I can tell you. I don't have any camp stories. I can't show off a fresh mind space or a new summer energy. No, because I didn't go. Why? It doesn't even matter. What matters is that I wasn't there. I didn't get to say goodbye. I never learned to welcome the so long. I'm still attached to, well, everything. Everything that's holding me back. All that emotional goo that kept me from signing up in the first place. I never got to lay there in those bunks with personal shelves. My fellow campers cozily close. And that's reality. I don't know how to self-conscious nap. I'm not tight with reality. I have no idea how to dirt earth soul search. And most importantly, I missed out on emotional trash binning with campers like Dodo, Atlantis, Fluffy, Buster, Flip, Baloo, MD, and Early Bird. My name is Hank. My name is still Hank. I never got a camp name. I never made my own tools for cooking goodbye breakfast buns by the campfire. I guess I try to hide from goodbye, but the truth is, Every day, people face each other and say goodbye. If it's not your face saying it today, it will be someone saying it to yours another day. I could have figured this all out at camp so long. I didn't go, but you could. Okay, fantastic. I think that ending is really worth every second. Endings are important, and there's also uh, some additional flyers to hand out for Camp Solong, which is a real thing that you can attend. So. All right, two down. We're doing pretty well. I hope the next spin will be as rewarding. We're going to go for eight, which is, I'm very happy to say, Lydia Röder. Lydia Röder has been working for 20 years as a palliative practitioner. She uh, is the one who, who led the group in the last aid course, and she uh, made this instrument as a part of a workshop, which she uses with various uh, people that she accompanies in the dying process. This is a Zoom call that I had with her last week. Und? Also, ich heiße Lydia, komme aus Berlin. My name is Lydia from Berlin, Germany. And I'm working with... Uh, 
different kind of people, for example, dying people, people in grief, or just normal, uh, normal people who are not dying. I mean, we are all dying, but not at the moment, maybe. I'm playing for her today, so just to explain how it works. Yeah, I feel like, like, yeah, more or less that, that I am the instrument or the in instrument is in me. And I feel the vibrations in my, my, my breast and stomach and. I think that's the idea that, uh, because the instrument is a whole cover. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. uh, the idea is that, um, the instrument gives a sound, but if you put it on the on the body of someone, then it's also a sensation. So it's not just listening, it's also the sensation what she was talking about. And I think mm. that only comes if you have it on your on your body. And the idea is to have a, something like a sound carpet, mm -hmm. clang teppich. Mm -hmm. So that's not to play a instrument where you remember some songs from your history and you go on memories. It's more like what she was saying. Um, it's to be in the moment and um, just to give a feeling what's going on at the moment. It's more like coming into the now and not going into the past. So that's why mm -hmm. we don't say it's the instrument. Normal, normally we say it's a clang körper, mm -hmm. sound body. Mm -hmm. And it's a more or less a double sound body because the mm -hmm. instrument is a body, a sound body, and the, the body of someone is a sound body as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they were produced normally on the beginning for people in coma mm -hmm. and for people with dementia and for dying people because there is not much what reach them. Mm -hmm. So 
the question is how you go in contact with people like this. If they can't really hear, they need something like to feel as well. Mm -hmm. So in the moment in the that moment you're playing, playing, you have less pain. Yes. Yeah, or not even in this moment, uh, a bit after as well, like 10, 15 minutes. So it's not just for the moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's going further a little bit. And um, yeah, people with dementia, they, they, are, um, they are more focused. It's to be in the moment, it's um, to have less pain, and it's um, for focus. So mm -hmm. Maybe these three things. Okay, thank you. The Körper Tambora is a really amazing experience to have on your body because you feel the molecules inside yourselves vibrating. All right, let's see what the wheel will bring now. That's a number four. Number four, John Luke Roberts. John Luke Roberts is a British comedian, as I mentioned before. You will need to listen quite carefully. It's, uh, he will be doing a regional accent at some points, but I've tried to put a helpful hint into the film uh, to help you with understanding a certain element of it. <laughs> It is better to have loved and lost than to have never loved at all. But it is better to be able to turn into an eagle at will than it is to have loved and lost. But it is better to have never loved at all than it would be to walk into a room and see two dogs having sex in the missionary position. Especially if they then just carry on one of them turns its head towards you and just holds eye contact just keeps holding eye contact keeps carrying on slows down a bit but better to have butter that spreads really easily straight out of the fridge it's not spreadable butter it's normal butter and it's been in the fridge it's just been in the fridge but it spreads that's good it would be worse to spend years inventing the fork and then find out that there already is one. But it would be worse to discover that it's called an A-hole because it's the first of 26 holes that you have. Or to be a human statue working in Covent Garden and know that at your very best and with a lot of practice, you could be nearly as good at your job as a corpse painted silver would be. When your dad's on his deathbed, and you've got a difficult history, you know, a, a tough relationship, and you're desperate really for some kind of closure, some talking to each other, you, you know, it's one final conversation. You're not sure you're going to get it. And then he beckons you over and he says, Son, son, come over. I've, I've got something I'd like, like to say. Son, right. Uh, how did they know when they'd finished naming the Curly Whirly? I mean, when they hit on Curly, they must have known that wasn't enough. You know, a I mean, good start, sure, but a lot of empty space left on the packet. Yeah, maybe one person in the room said, Curly, great, let's call it a day. But, you know, that's Peter. Yeah, he's always trying to sneak off early. But, you know, look at the space left on the packet. Peter's wrong. Everyone knows we can do better. 
So then I did spitball, you know, they go, Curly, uh, Curly, Curly chocolate, two on the nose, you know, Curly twat, oh, it's too rude, that. Somebody probably suggested Curly Jessica, because they're in a slowly failing relationship with someone called Jessica. And they thought, you know, maybe, just maybe they can win her back if they name a chocolate bar after her. But no one wants to have a chocolate bar named after them. Just ask Derek Snickers. So they're running through, you know, Curly, you know, like a curly, bit, curly, curly hat, Curly t- Twiddly, Curly Doddly Do, Curly Bibbly g- Wap Bap, Curly Do Ga Ga Ga, Curly Foo Pata Cha La La, Curly, yeah, uh, Curly what, Caramel, Curly Caramel, Curly Caramelly, what's it? Cur-? And then somebody goes, Curly Curly. And everyone says no, but they know they're onto something. So they go, right, all right, Curly, Curly Hurley, Curly Burley, Curly Whirly, Curly Whirly! They must have known. Straight away, they must have known. Punched the air when they got to Whirly. You know, Peter must have felt like a right idiot. But they stopped there. Curly Whirly. I mean, it's not bad, sure, you know. But could you honestly look me in the eyes and tell me that that chocolate bar doesn't look like a curly whirly widdly woo. Could you? Could you look me in the eyes and tell me? Could you? Right. You can't. Can you? And you say, no. And then he dies. That'd be worse. But it'd be better to open a new pack of coffee beans and just smell them. It's better than that to have someone buy you flowers. It's so good to be bought flowers, nice flowers. Better buy yourself flowers. It's nice to buy yourself flowers. Bubble bath. Well, oh, it'd be better than that to find out after all these years that your chin detaches, just screws off, and it's got lots of useful items inside. You know, if you, uh, needle and thread, little tube of glue, paper clips. Ah, it'd be better than that to have a dog who who run to the door when your newspaper comes through the letterbox and, and just rip that newspaper up so you don't have to read it. Better still to have a dog that will hide your TV remote and set up parameters on your laptop so you can't access Twitter anymore or theguardian.co.uk. You can finally have some relief. Better than the socks are. It's still not great, but worse, I think. Worse would be um, garlic bread, but with the ratios of garlic and, and, and bread reversed. Go you know, the restaurant. You did get to meet Elton John. I mean, it's not sour entirely, and then there's a happy ending there with the letter thing. Actually, so, that might be up. The, I think I might have got that completely wrong. Mooses. You had the pleasure of the mooses. You can find pleasure in finding out you've misread it. If you've got Father Christmas, you've still met Father Christmas. I mean, and then you get to keep him there for a while. I guess there's, there's an upside to the it, Donald Duck party thing, actually. I don't think that's the worst thing. I mean, you can at least laugh about it and you, it was a dress code. I don't think you, want, you wouldn't want a nail through it. If you ask someone for a fried egg and they brought it to you on their hand rather than the plate, that's that not good. I mean, and to be honest, if you've got a thing for frogs, I mean, why keep that to yourself? Don't, certainly don't care. I think you're in the wrong for kissing the frog in the first. And if your job was to be the person who goes to restaurants and checks whether or not you, you can see the urinals from the body of the restaurant because they must have some official garlic bread with can't ratios just... of garlic and bread reversed you know it's just slightly bready garlic rather than the, the, the very garlicky but you want very garlicky bread you don't want slightly bready garment garments you don't well, you don't want any garments flying good but you only are like yes i'm putting that near the top to be able to fly but also with the caveat that only if you're very on top of how much energy you need first so that you don't suddenly run out of puff to so wait, you've to got fly. that right when you're too hard so, to do anything. If it's better to, it's, it, we've stacked the main. Th- you're still on the main. Th- if it's better, it's better to have loved and lost than to never loved at all. And then everything sort of around. I think I mean, coming to a. Yeah, I can see it. Pa- it's more or less, it's panning out in a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's coming together. All right. Well, I think running out of time, so I'm going to proceed with the next spin. Oh, wait.
number five, we have Anna-Marie Goldschmidt, the wonderful kinesiologist from Denmark. She's a very special part of our um, collective, always bringing her good energy to the group. So hello, I am Anna-Marie Goldschmidt, coming from Denmark. And I'm here together with you and during the next five minutes, I will conduct a short exercise uh, to connect body and mind in order that you can ease or help yourself in challenging situations. And you might find it useful today and other situations in your life. And you might even do it together with another person you want to assist doing some kind of movement from one situation to the other, a kind of transition, a kind of path, making a passage, or maybe just only a movement. So let's say that you feel stagnant in a situation, you feel stuck in a situation. And then a good thing would be just to hold the points on your forehead, they are here, hold them with your thumb and two fingers, and the other hand on the back side of your head. And then just think about a situation where you feel stuck and have felt stuck. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> well, that happens. <laughs> Stop it. We, we can just cut that bit out. <laughs> and then think of a situation where you have felt stuck or a situation now where you feel stuck. And then just take a couple of moments to scan through your body and find out where in your body you have a feeling of stiffness, feeling of being rigid. Maybe you even feel a pain or a discomfort, a soreness or numbness. That uh, is our time, I'm afraid. Sorry to Anne-Marie. Thank you so much for spending this time. We didn't have a sudden death situation, which must be a good thing on Friday the 13th. Um, please join me for some fairly sad sandwiches uh, in the back and any questions you might have about what we haven't seen and the loss that we may have experienced. Thank you very much.